Hi and welcome back. Just lately I've been playing with a bit of uh, melting metal uh, sand casting. So I've been reading this book in particular which has been really helpful. Uh, everything's sort of explained in layman's terms, easy to follow. Um, it goes from simple, you know, from the basics through to some, some more complicated stuff. So that's been a real help. But first of all um, I had to mix my sand up. Uh, they call it green sand and so what we've used for that is I've got some silica sand here and um, just sand white sand and it's really fine it's a really fine type of sand and I sieved that sand as well because um, obviously the finer the sand the better your um, definition will be on your castings and that so that was the sand then to mix that we have to use a clumping agent or um, you know, so the sand combined, and most sort of common thing what people use for this type of setup is a bent night clay. So to be able to source that, you could either go to like a farmland shop or something like that where they sell it. Um, it's something to do with cattle, but I'm not quite sure. Or you can buy just um, bent night cat litter. So this is a um, a granular type consistency. So we need to liquidise that and grind that up into a fine dust and I've done that in here. So again the same as the sand, this is really fine all ground up and I've sieved that as well. So once we've got that stage that far, we can then start mixing that together. I'll get rid of these. So this is my sand in here all mixed up. Um, so what we've got in here, we've got all practically all that sand, um, which was in the bag, which was um, 10 kgs of sand. And then to the sand, we need to mix about 8% of cat litter. And we've started off at 8% anyway. So mix that in, um, a little bit of water, and then give that a real good mix up. And once we've got that far, we can then start to see how well this is gonna hold together. So as you can see, it just holds in a, you know, because it's got the clumping in there from the cat litter, it will just stay together. And if we break that, we get a clean break. So I've messed around with this mixture quite a bit. And I've now got it more or less where it's um, breaking nicely. And I've done a couple of castings, which I'll show you in a minute. So the sand, um, when I first started, it was too dry. So I had to hand, add a bit more water. But also it didn't clump very well, so I put in some more cat litter. So I've got about 10% cat litter in here to um, the ratio to the sand. And that's now holding together, as you can see, a lot better. And it breaks really cleanly. So yeah, so the sand is, you know, it's come out really well at the moment. So that's that done. And then I'll show you um, what I've actually cast so far. So these are the two items which I've cast. These are just purely test parts. So this was the first casting. And as you can see here, I didn't have my sand mixture quite right. It was too dry. And this was the second casting with a with a better mix of sand. So with the sand on the edges here, you could see that fell away where it got washed into the um, runner uh, when I um, poured, you know, poured the hot metal. But in this one where the sand was mixed better, you can see it's held its shape a lot better. So these are just purely test pieces, nothing special. So what we've got here is, um, this is the actual part which we've cast. So if we go back to... So how I cast them parts, um, from reading in here and obviously watching loads of videos on YouTube, um, we've done this type of setup. So if I just put this together, this is all 3D printed by the way. Right, so what we've got is, um, this is obviously in the sand and we create a mold in the sand using these items. So we've got a pour and sprue here, and then it goes into a runner. 
and then it comes through to what they call a spin trap and the spin trap um, is supposed to um, catch the soft or you know the particle particles of sand which are loose in here and it's supposed to trap these inside the spin trap so the metal gets poured down here comes straight through on the runner rushes into the spin trap and then as it starts to fill the spin trap up it will then start to go through the gate which is here and into the part which we're forming or which we're you know casting so that's all in theory and um, on that pour it did work really well but there's so many different setups of um, gating and runners and pouring holes and sprues and all this sort of thing you know it's a huge sort of topic and uh, can get quite complex so this is our pour and what we've got here also is a pouring basin so when we pour the aluminium in we pour it into the basin first it comes over a ridge then down into the pour and sprue and comes straight across the runner into the spin trap and then obviously fills the gate and the part as well so that's how we've got so far um, i'm happy with the results of this one and that came out quite well and we also got a better shape and um, we've got some shrinkage here and the corners aren't so defined this one is a lot more defined um, i think through having you know the, the sand was a lot better um so that's helped a lot plus um you know there's other sort of things come into it as well but anyway so yeah so that's the attempt so far so what we're going to do next is um, we're going to do another um another casting and this time we're going to use a separate or a different setup to that So rather than having all this fancy stuff like these here, we're just going to go straight and simple. Uh, Myford man, um, Myford boy, sorry, he does a very similar sort of thing to this. So all we're literally going to do is have that as our casting in the sand or our, our pattern in the sand. We're going to put a riser here and we're going to put our filling hole here. And then, well, not quite, and then we'll have a gate coming straight into here. And we're just going to pour the metal straight in the hole in the sand obviously these will be taken out and it's going to flow into the part and then come up the riser so as it as the metal um, sort of starts to um, solidify any metal you know we're going to have some shrinkage in this tube here and then we'll have a bit of shrinkage obviously over here but that's what we're going to try next and we'll see how that goes So before we get into casting that flywheel, I just thought I'd show you just my basic setup, which I've been messing around with. Um, I built this. This was really cheap to build and um, just to, you know, learn the real basics of it. And I've, all I've been doing with this is just melting some cupcakes. So what we've got is we've got a regulator, obviously, um, which allows us to control the gas pressure. And we normally run this up to or anywhere up to about 20 PSI that will allow us to go. And that comes through into our burner so the burner is a like a venturi setup so the, the gas is squirted straight down the middle of the pipe and then the air is drawn in around here and that gives us a lot of pressure a lot of heat and uh, this really does roar and um, way too hot for this small furnace but we obviously we can control the um, the gas flow in that so that's no problem and then this is just what they call a coffee can furnace so we've got what we've got in here is a mixture of um uh, what was it that was perlite which you get from a garden center which is like the water retaining white little stuff what you put in um, pots and that sort of thing and also a mixture of uh, mortar cement uh, not mortar cement um refractory mortar and mix that up over a ratio i think it was about five parts uh perlite to one part of refractory and then obviously let that dry and blah 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 and then so that gives us a real basic fur furnace and in that furnace we were just using the stainless steel cup just to melt the aluminium in so put that in there and on the lid on and then set light to it and then wait about oh i can't remember what the times was i haven't used this one for a while now and then once we've got our metal melted we can then take this out 
and pour that straight into the cupcake tray and that gives us these cupcakes and then obviously you can, we can remelt those to you know form other parts so that's that one since then um, I've been messing around I just uh, purchased a heat treat oven which is um, does allow the temperature to go up quite high and this will allow me to melt aluminium in a lot bigger crucible so obviously I've got a lot more volume in there and um, so we can make a bit of parts but I'm going to remake another furnace you know on a bigger scale at some stage uh, but this is just you know, like I say I've been just learning that's all so this is just going to be for that I'm just messing around with that at the moment So here's the heat treat oven, um, quite an oldish model, but it still works really well. And this particular model is so well insulated. Um, when, when this goes up to temperature, you can't even feel the heat on the outside. You know, we've got so much thickness of these stones in here, these heat stones, uh, works well. When um, I first used it, it was a thermostat was, or you know, the thermostat was just an analog type one but the temperature was jumping all over the place, um, not ideal. So I installed a PID controller, which is a digital controller, and now we can get the temperature. So if we put in, say, like 700 degrees for melting aluminium, 680, 700, um, we set this to 700, and that will stay very close to 700. It may drop a few below or go a few over, but not like it was before. It was wildly going everywhere. So a lot better, and obviously um, we can time it and that what, such thing. So we've got the thermostat running in the back here, which is obviously connected into the PID controller as well. Um, the crucible is an A2 size crucible, so it gives us more volume than the stainless steel cup we were using in the other furnace. I know it's not ideal for melting metal in here because that, if that crucible gives way, that metal is going to flow everywhere. But like I say, while I'm learning, it's just going to be ideal for melting. And then we've got, obviously, safety. This is all safety. We've got a switch up here, which operates when the door is shut. As soon as that door is released, the power goes off inside here. So, yeah, so that's the heat treat oven. Um, the main use for this is going to be heat treating steels um, eventually, um, especially for a bit of tool making and that sort of thing. We want to be able to, you know, um, harden the steels and that sort of thing. So yeah, so that's the heat treat oven. So that's it for part one. In part two, we'll ram up a mould and we'll start to, or ram up a pattern, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do a pour and I'll film that process and we'll see how that pour turns out.